Well, you know, there's like five awesome books. There yeah. are five awesome champions of those books. And one book more awesome than the other four. <laughs> Ours. <laughs> Everybody's book is good. Hey guys, Akil Augustine here, and I'm with my book brother, Corey Doctorow, and we're gonna dissect Radicalized, which I read and thoroughly enjoyed. So oh, That's good to hear, thank you. First off, why'd you write the book? So this was my Trump anxiety book. Uh, you know, I was working on a novel, so which is coming out in October. It's called Attack Surface. It's a very good book, too. Plug, uh, plug, plug. Yeah, but I was working on this book, and the news was coming at me fast, as it does. And uh, every time... I uh, took a break. I was just being bombarded with headlines and I couldn't figure out whether new things were happening or just like headline writers were repushing the stories I'd read yesterday. And you know, as a writer, when I'm feeling anxious, I try to make narratives, sort of neat, tidy stories. And so I started writing these things absolutely therapeutically. And so that's, that's how it came about. It was not an intentional book. And I, I did manage to finish the novel on time too. I know you sell books, you write books, but what was the goal? Like, is there... When you write something like this, yeah. is there something you're trying to achieve? Sure. So, you know, I work on all these, like, abstract technical issues. And we should mention the book is about, the, it's these four novellas about people kind of taking control of their technology in difficult situations. You know, one's about a refugee, and one's about a superhero, and one's about a, a prepper, and one's about a, yeah, a dad who watches his, his, his wife you know, get cancer that's treatable, but the insurance company won't treat it. It's that one resonates we... with a lot of people. Oh, yeah, I hear from that a lot of the time. You know, all of these technical issues that underpin these stories, they're really abstract, they're really complicated, and they're kind of boring, right? Like, no, should cer- not. Well, but the technical issues, yes. are, right? But, the like, when I, if I go to you, like, well, let's talk about circumvention of technical protection measures and whether or not that should be limited to instances in which there's bona fide copyright infringement, it's like... <laughs> but... But if you tell me... You know you're not going to be able to use your bread or your toaster or your fridge. that this is going to be a means for wealth extraction. If you put the meat on the bones, right? Like if you take these dry abstract questions and you turn them into really vivid stories about people living and dying by them, then you not only create a sense of urgency for things that feel like they're a long way away and not very immediate in your life when, you know, the world is on fire, but it it, it also uh, means that as these problems become sharper because if you ignore a problem, it just gets worse. We got a vocabulary for talking about it. So, you know, as we're recording this, like now in January, there was just this super viral thing on Twitter where this guy bought an HP printer, bought some HP print cartridges, and then a couple of months later, he noticed that there's this $4.99 recurring charge on his credit card. And he's like, I'm going to cancel that. And he gets an email from HP saying, you are no longer subscribed to your ink cartridge, so it won't work, right? Um, and so that's basically your book. That is the book, right? The first story. I mean, HP has been doing this for like 20 years. This is just the latest, latest, you know, mustache twirling supervillain plan that they've come up with. But you know, everyone who's reading that, that news article, who's also read the story is like, I understand this now. This isn't just this one isolated incident. It's, this is part of like late stage capitalism, right? And then when you see like the Ford government defeating a private member's bill for a right to repair that would allow independent mechanics to service cars, and you see uh, Abbott Labs out in Silicon Valley uh, shutting down independent software to read the, the data coming off of glucose monitors used by people with uh, diabetes because they claim that that data is proprietary, even though it's like the data from your blood. Uh, you know, the, then, then it all starts to become not just a bunch of isolated incidents. This is one issue. This is one fight. And I know how this fight ends if we don't fight it well, because I read that story. So that's what I'm trying to get at, right? I want to get people all fired up about things that will eventually be on fire when they're still smoldering, so that we're not all on fire when it's time to deal with them. Are you a writer of warnings? Yeah, and, and warnings, but also, like, I want it to be a program for technological self-determination, right? So it's not just like a, this is going to be terrible. Like, the other half of this is this will all be so great if we don't screw it up, right? It, it's, it's, you know, when you seize control of the computation around you, right, when you make the device answer to you instead of pushing you around, like, the reason we like these things is because they do stuff for us. They yeah. free us up from drudgery and allow us to have more authentic relationships with the people around us, devote ourselves to the things that matter. But when they hijack our attention, when they hijack our, our, our um, pocketbooks, then they, they do the opposite of what we got them for. And so I, I want people not just to be scared of how terrible things might be, but also excited about how great we can make them 
if uh, the technology becomes something that is under our control. And that's one of the subtle differences I find between what you've done and the series Black Mirror, which is something that I often yeah. compare your book to, but it seems like there's a little bit of sprinkling of maybe we don't all die at the end well, like, from like, you as yeah. opposed to Black Mirror. Sure, and Charlie Brooker's really great, and that show's amazing, but, you know... It's dark. I got into this stuff, I got into technology because I was excited by it, not because I was angry about it, right? And what I'm angry about now is that that glorious web that we built with our own hands that was, you know a billion different websites, each of them a little small holding by someone doing something weird and individual, and now it's like a mall, right, with the same 22 stores and half of them are going out of business. I want to actually live in a world of texture and difference where we're not all crammed into this one-size-fits-all thing. You know, you're important. No, I'm serious. I'm, I'm very thankful and happy that I got you as my author and radicalized as my book because I think I'm going to win. Because well, you did the work, though. Well, and you've got the competitive spirit. I was yeah. saying, like, I went to hippie summer camp where we played cooperative basketball so there'd be no winners or losers. You actually, or, or volleyball, rather. You actually, like, care about winners and losers in sports, and that's your whole thing. So yeah. So I think you're gonna, you got the killer instinct. They would have kicked me out of that camp. Yeah, maybe. For sure. Maybe. <laughs> Do remember Canada Reads runs from the 16th and 19th of March. 